Okay, so what I want to do real quick is a short video going over basic instructions for hack assembly. There are going to be more advanced instructions we get to in the next few videos and a few more advanced concepts. This is going to be the absolute bare minimum type of instructions. It's going to be manipulating our registers and navigating through RAM. Not necessarily ROM quite yet, but this is specifically how do we load data into RAM, pull data from RAM, how can we access different values in RAM essentially, just a few different things like that. So nothing really in depth, but again, it is the founding part of all of this. So it is basically kind of the cornerstone building block aspect of it. So even though it's very simplistic, it is going to be absolutely critical to understand. So I'm going to get on over to it and take a look. So again, just basic hack instructions. Not a big deal. So, control, computer overview. We have our RAM, we have our ROM. We have the address register, the data register, and the concept of the M register. So, recall the address register, look at these lines, dictates where we are in both RAM and ROM at all times. So if I load in zero, I'm at RAM and ROM zero. If I load in 12, I'm at RAM and ROM 12. So again, the address register dictates what RAM and ROM address is currently selected. The M register is that selected RAM register. So again, M is always gonna be tied to say RAM Whereas the data register is completely separate. It is a temporary scratch workspace for us to store data and it is completely stable. It's not volatile like all the other ones. Those will be constantly adjusted. So using data register as some safe memory storage is what it's for. Again, its whole purpose is just a data register used to store data. Now, a programming language that consists of mnemonic codes for a corresponding machine language instruction is the basics of what assembly is essentially. So it is a language tied directly to some hardware architecture. In industry, you see that in terms of like Intel's x86, maybe you have like ARM, MIPS, uh, older instructions like Z80. There's a lot. If there's a computer architecture, it has some form of assembly, machine codes, and instruction set that it's tied to. Since we're making a completely custom virtual environment, you're gonna have a hack assembly language. That is the type of computer we're making. It's a 16-bit computer, so it has its own assembly instruction set. Now, these instructions are broken up into two different types. We have A instructions, and C instructions, and we'll get into those eventually as well. So, A instruction is going to be an assignment instruction. And these are essentially the most simplistic type of instruction. They are absolutely critical. So the simplicity does not mean that they're not necessary. Honestly, their simplicity means they're extremely necessary because they do one specific thing but everything that you'll do is based on that principle. So, one example is this at 19. So if we look at the syntax, always some at const, that will alter very slightly in about two videos. But for right now, it's some at constant value. So that is loading a value into the A register. Now, this is the only time that we can use kind of integer values and you'll you'll see that in a second but the concept of loading a arbitrary number into a register does not exist that is why this instruction is so important it's utilizing program counter to do this so you keep that in mind. This is the only time that we can get arbitrary data. That will become very apparent in just a bit. So, the purpose of the A instruction is to load some value 
into the address register. Now, there are two side effects of this. And that is that ROM A and ROM A will both be selected as the A register is always tied to whatever RAM and ROM address is selected. So if we adjust the A register, we adjust the M register as well. That'll also become apparent very soon. Now, the next type of instruction, the C instruction, which is used to do calculations, computations, however you want to view it, are a good bit more complex. There's a lot more versatility in what they do, but they are always tied to computations from the ALU. So, if we take a look at the syntax for these, we have register of AD and M and be equal to the constant values of zero, one, and negative one. These are the only three constant values that you can do something like A equals zero or M equals one. If you try to do something like a equals five, this does not work. You can only use zero, one, negative one because zero, one, and negative one are results from the ALU. So if we want to do like a equals five, you'd have to do an A instruction of at five. So keep that in mind. Next one is register one equals register two. And this is something on the lines of a equals M. Register 1 can be A, D, and M. Register 2 can be A, D, and M, but it can also be negative. So if we want to do something like D equals negative M, we do that. No problem. And the next one is where things get fairly complicated, where we have register equals register 1, operation register 2. So register can be A, D, M. Operation can be plus or minus in this case. There's a few other things it can be, it could be like and or etc just basic operations it can be done with the lu it can be done in a c instruction and then again we just have like adm uh constant value of one so if you want to do something like uh a equals m plus one you could do that perfectly fine now keep in mind register one cannot equal register two so you could not do something along the lines, oops, sorry, of say D equals M plus M. This, the reason you cannot do this is because there is a restriction in hardware of the ALU, you recall, it takes in some value X and some value Y and gives you some output. Now, you'll learn when we start piecing all this together, that the inputs to the ALU, a D register, and either the A or the M register. You could not do something like the D register. The D register input have to have D and A or D and M. That is why this restriction exists. So again, it's a little bit of an information dump but keep in mind, it'll, again, it'll become more apparent as we continue on. All right, so just going to do a few examples of C instructions as there are a plethora of how you can, how many you can do. And this is also just going to be some general examples of how basic assembly works. So we have on the left side, some typical instructions. Uh, we have some A instruction here, A assignment uh, at constant. When we have some C instructions down here, D equals one, D equals A, D equals D plus one, D equals D plus A, so on and so forth. Now, if you look here, we have a comment. We are loading the value two into register D. There's multiple ways you can do this, but the example given here is pretty direct. We don't have to utilize multiple registers. It's a little bit roundabout but essentially we're doing D was one, and set D to one, and then we do D was D plus one, D being one, it's essentially one plus one, so that sets D equal to two. Now, this is one way to do this. You won't do something like this very, very frequently, but showing that, hey, we can adjust this value directly without needing to 
use other registers or RAM or anything like that. Now, if we want to do something more complicated, like say loading the value of an arbitrary constant like 1954, then there's a different approach, but this approach will scale to any arbitrary value. What's happening here is we do at 1954. So this sets the A instruction, 1954. I'm gonna do this real quick. You're always adjusting these three registers. So we do at 1954, it's going to adjust the A register to 1954. It will select RAM A. So the memory will be adjusted. Currently we don't know what it is and that's perfectly fine, it's okay. And then we want to do D equals A. So that just loads 1954 directly into the date register. So that'd be how you have constant values loaded into data and how we can actually use arbitrary values in our calculations. Really good. We cannot do something like D equals 1954. This just doesn't work. So again, every time you want to use some value, have to do it in conjunction with some A instruction. And this one's a little more complicated. We have some mathematical model. It's just basic addition, not a big deal. But we can do something like at 23 to get this constant value. And then we are loading the value in the data register plus 23 into the data register. So we can just do D equals D plus A. So what's happening here uh, I'm going to give some arbitrary value in the data register. Uh, I'm just going to say it's 12 right now. Just going into this, data equals 12. Okay? So essentially, we're saying data should be equal to 12 plus 23. So do at 23. That loads 23 into the A register. Again, memory will be adjusted to something. We don't know. But it is a side effect, so keep that in mind. And then we have data plus a which is mean is 12 plus 23 which if we add those together we should get 35 we'll adjust this to 35 not too bad okay so now we're going to look into manipulating ram so what we're doing here is we are taking the value constant value of zero and loading that into ram register 100. So what we do is at 100 and if we look at it we have AD and M as usual and we are doing at 100 so that loads 100 into the address register. Now this time M does adjust to whatever is at RAM 100. That's what we wanted to adjust so we do M equals 0 because again, this zero is a constant value from the ALU, and that one's perfectly fine because we have zero, one, negative one. And we just set this to zero, and that sets RAM 100. Again, this is RAM A equal to zero. Now, if we want to do something a little complicated, like load some arbitrary constant value, then we have to do. The general approach that a lot of what assembly is going to be. So we initially need to get the finite value of 17. So generally when we do assembly you're going to see combinations or pairs of A instructions and C instructions. So this is going to be assigning the actual register and then some computation. So same thing here except we have two pairs that you'll see how they interface. So first one, we need 17. So A instruction of at 17, A, D, and M. Let's see how it works. So we get 17 here. Again, M will be adjusted. No what's at register 17, but that's perfectly fine. What we want to do is get the finite value. So use D with A. So we're storing that 17 at the D. Again, that is a stable place in memory, so we can keep it there. Now we do at 100, so it's going to adjust a register. So now we're at RAM 100. Again, M would adjust, we don't know what's there. Perfectly fine. So now we do M equals D, and now we take the 17 and load that into RAM register 100. That's basically how that works. Again, you see that we have 
this AC pair, and then this AC pair. And then if we want to do something a little bit more, maybe not straightforward, we take the value at RAM register 200 and store that in RAM register 100. What we're going to do here is a little bit more convoluted. We're going to do A, D, and M, like usual. But now I want to look at RAM. Oops. Let me give myself a little more space. RAM 100. Maybe something. And then the value of RAM 200. So I need to set RAM 200 to some arbitrary value. I'm going to do 36. Okay. So. Few things are going to happen here. Then we have AC pairs. We have at 200. That gives us 200 here in our address. That adjusts our memory. However, we do know what's at RAM register 200. It's 36. We're going to do at 200. A equals 200. And then M equals 36. Okay. So then we do D equals M. Load the value 36 into the data. Because it's going to be a stable place in memory to manipulate that and move it to RAM register 100 in just a second. So we're done with that. We got 36. And then we need to go to our new place where we actually want to load that. So do at 100. That's going to change M. We don't know what's here. So. But we're doing M equals D. What sets the M register? 36. Loading 36 into RAM register 100 data in register 200 and we move that to RAM register 100. It's mostly a copy because we didn't change the data at 200. But that's the general case of how this works. So let's take a look at this one. This is doing a operation of loading a mathematical algorithm basically into RAM 3. So we're just doing RAM 3's data minus 15 loading that RAM 3. Or in a more straightforward sense, we are reducing the value in RAM 3 by 15. So if we wanted to actually do this, well, we can take a look at this side because that's the actual computation we're doing. And we can say that we are reducing RAM 3 by 15 or subtracting 15 from RAM 3. So let's go ahead and get the constant value of 15. There's an A instruction. I need some C instruction. D equals A. Because we want the constant value of 15, not the data at register 15. So that's the first step. Now we have we want oops that's a m not a and then i'm gonna do some value here um maybe move that over here i'm just gonna do 17. do 17. so do at 15. i don't know it's m equals a 15. Okay. So now we need the data RAM 3. We do at 3. That's where we want to be. 3. And then M. We know it's at RAM 3. It'll be 17. And so we want to do. Let's do. I'll do it the long winded way for now. It'll be too bad. Well, actually, I'll just do it the straightforward way. It'll be a lot easier. Well, I'll do it the long way and then show how to move it to the more shorthand way. So D equals mm, with a value at 3 and subtract it from 15. So we want M minus D. Because M is 17 right now, I'm going to reduce that by 15. So D should be equal to 2, and then we're going to load that into RAM 3. So we want M equals D. 
Justin Grand 3 to 2, like so. Now, this is the more long-winded approach because we do our operation and then we store the value. We could, since we know we're just using D here, along the value here, do an in-place memory result of M equals M minus D. So we're just reducing the value in M minus the value in D. So that'd be the general approach of that one. This one is taking the value in RAM 4, incrementing it by 1, and then loading that into RAM 3. So let's go ahead do A, D, M here. Let's take a look at how we want to start. So right off the bat, we know we want the value in RAM 4. Let's do at 4. Is 4. Uh, let's say RAM 4 is... Uh, RAM 3. Don't know what that is, but RAM 4 is 6. At 4, M equals 6. Okay. Here we could do D equals M because we want the actual data at the memory register. And since we have a constant value of 1, we can just simply do m plus 1. That would be m, which is 6, plus 1, which is 7. Since this is a 1, you can do 0, 1, negative 1. Since ALU outputs, that's perfectly fine. You can actually see it as an example right here. And then we just need to move that to RAM 3. So at 3. Don't know quite yet. But then we just want to load that into the memory register. So we do m equals d, giving us 7 here, and loading that into RAM register 7. I mean, RAM register 3, my bad. And that's kind of just the general approach. So we did at 15, get a constant value, d equals a to store that into a safe workspace, moved over to RAM 3, where we actually want to store it, and did m equals m minus d to reduce the value in RAM 3 by 15. Then here we know we want RAM 4's value plus 1, so we get to 4, to D equals M plus 1, because we have an incremented value. And then we moved over to RAM 3 where we want to store it, and then just load it in. That's not too big of a deal. So we want to do a bit more of a complicated approach. Then I'm not going to actually write the A, D, and M registers in this one. I'm just going to write the actual code for this one. So we have the data in RAM 0 plus the data in RAM 1 plus 17 constant value. And we want to load that into RAM 2. I will give some constant values here. Let's say 12 and then 5. Just so we know. Uh, some arbitrary data is there. The data doesn't matter in this case, but the RAM locations do. So, since that's the case, we'll do at 0 for RAM 0. D equals M, because we don't want 0, we want the 12 that's there. I'll just do D equals 12 as a counter for our algorithm here. Okay. So we have that part, and then we want to also add a 5 to it. And that's at RAM register 1. At 1, D equals M plus D, because again, D is 12 right now. M is going to be 5. Now D should be 17. Oh, that's, that's funny. And then now we want the actual constant value of 17. That we would do at 17 and this time we won't be using m because we want the actual constant value of 17 so we'll do d equals d plus a giving us 17 plus 17 which is 34 and then you want to load this data into register 2 so we do at 2 m equals d giving us 34 register 2 just like so. Good again. We have some AC, 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 
AC. Now, it's not always going to be the case, but it is more often than not the case. So, that is essentially kind of how basic instructions work. We're just choosing what registers we want to move things to. We have some restrictions on what the ALU can and cannot do. And there's also keeping in mind, should you use an A register or the M register when you're manipulating values? So it's a lot to take in and it's a very, very different paradigm than like high level programming like C or C++ or Python. And yes, yes, I know I did say C as a high level language. It is a high level language. It's a very rudimentary high level language but compared to assembly, which is basically machine code, it is. So, all that being said, I do hope all this made sense. And again, there will be more advanced procedures and advanced types of instructions and some that should hopefully make things make a little bit more sense so you're not just dealing with arbitrary register locations and memory and stuff like that. There's a lot of ways we can add abstraction and we'll get to that later. But that'll be later. So, hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.